All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a brand new year of our district innovation team live events. I am Mr. Garcia with the Innovation Station. That's right. I hope you have, um, I'm so happy that you have joined us. Wherever you're at, wherever you're watching, whatever your school you're at here in our district of Chula Vista, I'm just so glad that we are back and that you're in class, like literally watching me from hopefully their television or the laptops or whatever the case is. I want to thank our amazing station partners who continue to support us, um, the Qualcomm Think of It Lab. I want to thank the Chula Vista Elementary School District, the city of Chula Vista, and of course, the Chula Vista Public Libraries, where I am currently at right now. So behind the scenes, I have my co-pilots, Mr. Bruder, Mrs. Hughes, and Mrs. Bystrek, who will be moderating the chat and cannot wait to take your questions. So also, we're going to have a Kahoot game. So guess what? You can either play as a class or individually. So pay close attention to what you will hear today. All right, are you ready? Let's get flying. All right, so our focus today will be on how the helicopter was created and the kind of job it takes to maintain these flying aircrafts. So today we will take on the role of an aerospace engineer as we learn about the ideas and the science behind a helicopter. However, once we learn about it, We'll then design, create, and test our very own helicopter as well. Um, before we get started, I would like to ask you a question and have you answer it in the chat. If you could fly in any type of aircraft, what would it be and where would you go? All right, one more time. If you could fly in any type of aircraft, what would it be and where would you go? So if I could fly in any aircraft, I would probably want to fly in a helicopter over the islands and forestry of Hawaii. I love movies like the Jurassic Park movie. And guess what? I found out that they actually filmed the movie in Hawaii. So being able to fly in Hawaii over a, a, with a heli uh, through a helicopter would be a dream come true. So do me a favor, share your answers in the chat. One of our moderators are going to post that question in the chat in a few moments. All right, so if you're wondering why we're learning about helicopters, that's a great question. When planning for this event, I began to think of themes and realize that we would also be in the middle of summer when the weather is nice and warm outside. One of my favorite things to do in the summer is to sit in front of a fan and enjoy the wind coming out of it. But I also like to analyze why that fan is functioning the way it is. So thinking about that, this led me to think how propellers are part of many things that we see in our lives. Specifically, I get the chance to work with servos here at the Innovation Station. And those servos, as you see here on the slides, are little motors that have propellers on them. So here at the Innovation Station, we program these servos to spin different ways. Yet I also thought of how propellers are really essential to aircrafts. This type of thinking led me to investigate the history of helicopters and left me wondering if helicopters were ever influenced by what we know as fans. Well, luckily for us, I was able to find a cool explanation of how fans come into play with helicopters. So why don't you join me on the next slide or video and let's take a visit to see a brief history of helicopters. Day, it's lovely to stand in front of a fan. All that nice cool air being blown around. Ah, that's much better. I bet you didn't know that this fan's got something in common with some types of aircraft. Can you guess what? Propellers! The propellers on some aircraft and the blades of a fan work in a similar way. Although the propellers on planes aren't there to cool you down. If you're not sure what a propeller is, it's basically a number of blades joined together in the center, and they're usually on the front or the wings of an aircraft. It can be hard to see them when they're spinning. They just look like a blur. So let's slow things down and take a closer look. It all starts with the engine. This plane's about to get going. The pilot is turning the ignition. 
The engine mixes fuel with air and burns the fuel to release energy. The heated gas moves a piston and the piston's attached to a crankshaft. If you're not sure what a crankshaft is, it's just something mechanical that spins around. The propeller is attached to the crankshaft and as the engine runs, the propeller spins faster and faster and this makes the aircraft move forward. So how does a spinning fan get this aircraft moving? It's all to do with something called thrust. Thrust is what makes things, well, go. The wind moving past the blades creates pressure that pushes the plane forward. Propeller blades look a bit like wings and that's not a coincidence. Wings use the same science to give the aircraft lift to get off the ground. Up, up and away! Propeller blades are often a sort of twisty shape, wider at the middle than they are at the tip. The shape is very important. Think about the last time you played on a playground roundabout. If you stand in the middle, you don't go that fast. But if you're the one pushing around the edge, you really have to run, don't you? You both go around in a circle, but the one pushing has to go further and run faster. Much harder work! The centre of the propeller travels less quickly than the tips, so it has to be larger to catch more air. The cool thing about propellers is that they're a massive part of aircraft history from the very earliest planes. The Wright brothers were famous aircraft inventors who were amongst the first to build planes that could take to the air and stay there. Whilst their planes might look quite old-fashioned, the propellers they used didn't look that different to the ones you find on aircraft today. Now, they didn't have all the modern materials that we have, and they couldn't use too much metal in their aircraft. It was just too heavy. So, any idea what they made the propellers out of? That's right! Wood! The propellers would have been carved from single pieces of hard wood, like mahogany, walnut or black cherry. They were often very long, up to eight feet. As time went on, propellers became more likely to be made of metal. In the Second World War, all the famous aircraft had propellers, and the sound of propellers humming became as well known as the aircraft themselves. Most smaller aircraft use propellers, but planes that carry loads of passengers or fast military aircraft are likely to have jet engines. They're a lot more powerful. And noisy too! But propellers are so handy, you find similar things in all sorts of places. On boats, airships, and even on fans that keep you cool. Time for me to fly. See you soon, and chocks away! All right. Awesome. So I am so excited that we continue and that we can continue to talk about this. So let me go ahead and go back and revisit our question. All right. Um, if you could fly in any type of aircraft, what would it be and where would you go? So hopefully you had a chance to type in your answer. Um, if you haven't, hey, go ahead and still put it in there. We would love to hear it. We'll probably give you a shout out during our Kahoot game. So, Mr. Bruder, are you back there? Are you still there in the command center? Why, well, Mr. Garcia? Yes, I am. Nice. And I know that's what you referred to it as. So, uh, do we have any answers from our friends, Mr. Bruder, of, of what kind of aircrafts our friends would like to uh, fly in and maybe where would they go? Yes, I think your answer inspired a lot of them too as well. We have... Uh, one student who would like to fly, uh, Riley, a sixth grader out there, would like to fly in a private jet and go to some nice tropical place with their family. Very cool. Private jet. Yeah, I've seen those ones are really luxurious and really, really nice. That's really cool. Any other types of aircrafts? Uh, another response was any aircraft, um, but definitely a helicopter, and they'd like to go to the Bahamas. Ooh, that's very cool. Nice, nice. We also had quite a few that uh, wanted to go to France, specifically uh, Room 401 from one of our schools out there, and a whole bunch that wanted to go to Paris. <laughs> that is so cool. P taking a helicopter or plane ride and being able to see those views is always remarkable. I am the type of person that loves the window seats. So, hey, being able to go in a helicopter, I feel like almost the whole thing is a window seat. That is so cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing those answers, Mr. Bruder. Well, speaking of more questions, Guess what, everyone? I have another one. And that is this. 
What do we call people who design, build, and test helicopters or aircrafts in general? We know these individuals as aerospace engineers. So check this out. What they do is they plan, they design, they help diagnose aircraft engines and assemblies, such as hydraulic systems. I know, pretty big words, but hey, you can always replay this later on if you wanna learn about it. But check this out. Aerospace engineers also perform engineering duties and designing, constructing, and testing aircrafts. Guess what? They also test and design missiles and even spacecrafts. They also recommend improvements in testing and equipment techniques. So check this out too. Those of you that have been to our station experience in person or virtually, you might know a little bit about what the RIASEC is. So the RIASEC is a code for an aeros the RIASEC code for an aerospace engineer happens to be realistic and conventional. So that means if you like getting your hands on mechanical pieces and you like putting things together in an orderly fashion, then guess what? This job may be just for you. However, to learn more about the details of an aerospace engineer, guess what? Check out one of my other live events from last school year or a few months ago where we focused on what aerospace engineers do. We dove a lot deeper into that. We'll drop in our YouTube link later on um, as we finish our time together today. So let's keep moving forward. So here's the part. We're gonna now start and getting ready to start building something. Those helicopters that we've been talking about that we're gonna build together, we're gonna go ahead and start doing that. But before that, we need and we will be using the engineering design process. So the purpose of using this graphic organizer is that it's basically a design thinking habit of mind that allows us to solve problems and create solutions. So let me ask you a question. Have you been ever have you ever been faced with the problem before? Well, guess what? Maybe if you use this guide, it could help you solve it. So speaking of problems, let's dive into our engineering design process by looking at the want and needs and then the engineering challenge. You might see that as the problem and the solution. So our want and need is we want to build a paper helicopter. All right, that's what we want. We want to do that. And our solution or engineering challenge is this, to design and build a device that can stay in the air for a certain period of time. So now that I know what my problem and solution are identified as, it's time to ask some questions. That's right, if you know me, you know I like to ask a lot of questions. So this is a part of the engineering design process where asking a good question comes into play. And I actually have some already that I kind of wanted to reflect on and hopefully these are some of the questions you have as well. First question is this, what materials are we going to use? Hey, I get that all the time. And teachers, thank you for asking. We always wanna make sure that we're supplying the materials for you. So what materials are we gonna be using? Um, so get, at least giving you the list for that. Um, also, how much time will it take to build? Hey, you know what? Time is of the essence. And as we know that time is very valuable. So we have to know how long it's gonna to take to build. Also, another question I had about the helicopters is how long should the propellers be? I don't know. Well, guess we'll figure that out, right? And then how will the structure of the propellers catch the best hang time or air time available? That's another good question to ask. I don't know, but guess what? I have questions and that will lead us now into the imagination stage. So what ideas out there have been created for me to create a pebble helicopter, all right? So let's take a look at a few examples, all right? So as you can see here, I have on my slides, I have a few examples of a variety of paper helicopters that have been made. Um, I also have to think of, okay, what materials do I have available? Well, guess what? I know I have paper, I have paper clips, and I have scissors. I have that. I know I have that for a fact. If you have other stuff, hey, we could always try it out too. There's no right or wrong. Again, this is the imagine stage, so why not use it? So I think this is a good time now to move to the plan stage. And I want to plan my ideas of what I want my final project to be. So guess what? If testing goes well after I make it, I would have taken the role of an aerospace engineer. And then I'm going to want to find a way to improve it. So let's get into that planning stage. All right. So what are we building? 
we're going to build a device that can fly in the air, that can stay in the air for a certain period of time. So are you ready? I really hope so. And this is the materials that we're going to be using. All right, so what materials do we need? So here's the plan, the must haves, and we have our may haves, all right? So let me show what we do need, all right? We need a paper, a paper clip, and scissors, all right? If you don't have any of that, it's okay, don't worry. This is being recorded, all right? And I'm gonna have a really big disclaimer as we move forward to the next slides. So patience, patience, patience. Now, you could also have this. I don't have this, I'm not gonna use it, but I know a good amount of maybe some of you here at your schools might have these materials, but you could use crayons, markers, or colored pencils. If you want to decorate your helicopter, I mean, why not? Give it a little, you know, flair, design it. I would love to see those cool designs. So let's, why not try that? All right, so are you ready? We're going to get ready to create it and we're going to test it. But before we do that, I have a favor to ask of every single one of you, whether you're in kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or even sixth grade, shout out to my sixth graders. Do me a favor, please be patient, all right? Because remember this, you can pause actually this live event anytime you need to, especially if you're like, Mr. Garcia, you're going too fast. All right, relax, it's okay. Or you can sit back, relax, and guess what? You can watch it again later on on our YouTube channel and pause and fast forward and rewind anytime you want, all right? So I'm letting you know. All right, so let's get ready to test our device. And I am, voila, here we are with our supplies that we need. So again, I do have a pen just to kind of help with uh, incisions that I'm gonna make on my paper helicopter, but I do have my scissors as well, and I have my paper clips that I'm going to use. So first things first that I'm going to prepare myself with is um, I'm actually gonna get my, uh, paper and I'm gonna put it in landscape mode. Okay, so those of you like wait, what's landscape mode? Um, I like to refer it to the way you use your phones if you take photos or an iPad This is a uh, I'm sorry portrait mode and this is landscape mode. All right, so it's kind of like the wide side um, Landscape and the long side is portrait. All right back when I was in elementary school My teacher would say like all right, we're gonna fold it like a hot dog and we would fold it like this So that's what we're gonna fold it out. So we're gonna fold this in half and the reason why is because it's gonna give us some um a nice crease so we can know where we're gonna cut, okay? So we're gonna do, we're gonna fold this in half here just like this, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. And you're gonna be like, wow, Mr. Garcia, I have a lot of paper. Well, guess what? You have a lot of paper to make a lot of tests, which is pretty cool, all right? So if you mess up on one, well, then that means you could fix it for the other ones. All right, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this side paper to the side, and I'm gonna go ahead and fold this now in half. It's gonna get, I'm gonna put it on the wide side, fold this in half, just like this. And guess what? I'm gonna cut it again. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, every time I have a chance to make these kind of these kinds of projects, the first time I usually make it, it doesn't come out the way I originally planned. And it's not usually till the, maybe the third, fourth, fifth that I'm like, wow, this is a cool project. So if it takes me a few tries to really improve this, just know it's perfectly normal if it takes you a few tries. All right, from there, I'm gonna go ahead and now fold this in half. So that way my shape can look like this, but I do need to cut this. And technically now I'm gonna have two pieces that I could always modify or make later on, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side and I have my piece right here. All right, so what I'm gonna do with a pen or pencil, hopefully you have one of those writing tools there at your desk, I am going to draw a line right down the middle, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, just a line right down the middle. And then I'm gonna make an incision Maybe just go a little bit and then an incision right up a little bit past the halfway mark. And I'm not gonna go all the way. And the reason why I'm having it look just like this is because that's those are gonna be the lines that I'm going to cut, okay? I don't wanna cut completely, but guess what? Again, because I know I'm working with kindergartners all the way through sixth graders. If you mess up, it is okay because look at I have more pieces right here. I have a lot more pieces. So I want to make sure that all of you that are watching live, 
are being very patient with yourself. All right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and cut the incisions right here. And cut the incisions right here. All right. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the top. I'm going to go ahead and fold where I have the incisions and fold this part and this flap inside and the same with the other flap. All right, this is going to be my base of my helicopter. And don't worry if it's not perfect because you can see, look, it, I didn't use a ruler. It's not perfect, but it works, okay? If, if you're the type that you're conventional, shout out to my conventional people, and you need to use a ruler, then go for it. Use a ruler. But if you're like, hey, I'm more like free spirited, so I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and wing it. See what I did there? You can wing it. All right, I'm not winging it, by the way, because I've made a lot of these. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fold the flap towards me. All right. See that? I'm coming towards myself. OK, so go ahead and fold your flap towards you. And then I'm going to flip it over. And fold the other flap towards me again. And bam, look it, there's my helicopter. However, though, we are like, wait, what about those paper clips, Mr. Garcia? Well, here's what I'm going to do with the paper clips. I'm going to go ahead and fold this piece down here on the bottom. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to add more weight. The more weight I can add to the bottom, and that's why I'm going to add the paper clip. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add my paper clip. And lo and behold, here we are, my paper helicopter. Isn't that cool, right? So. We've created it, but remember that last part on that last slide? We need to test it. So I am going to go ahead and show you my helicopter test flight, all right? Let me get this going right here. So check this out. <laughs> cool is that look at that think about it how cool is the very fact that we have and we made it all right so here's the question and looking at it now i noticed a few things all right when i dropped it it spun really really fast all right so when i dropped my helicopter it spun really really fast and i noticed that um as it dropped um it was actually kind of gearing a little bit more towards the right like and that's why i actually had a when I had to remake my video or actually had to do my edits on my video, I had to zoom in actually to a specific location. All right. Um, the other thing is this, is that there wasn't that much air um, when I actually had a chance to test out my device. There wasn't that much air or wind happening outside. So sometimes I'm wondering, well, what if I would have tested it maybe like at the beach, kind of like when people go fly kites? Or what if I would have tested it and done it maybe at a taller building? Or a, a, as you can see, I wasn't very, very high. I was using the deck here we have at our library. But those are some of the things that I was some of my observations. So um, that leads me now to this next part is that's the improve stage. So now that we've built our design, what could we improve on? So please answer the following question in the chat. What would you do to improve your helicopter? All right. So what would you do to improve this design that we just created? So here's a, a couple things that I would do. I may add actually a couple more paper clips. So I might add another one um, and see what would happen. Um, I could also, as you can see here, I have an hel another helicopter that I made. Well, what if I doubled up on my propellers or found a way to put my propellers in a way where I actually have four propellers all together, all right? The other thing is this. Hey, have you ever heard the phrase, don't reinvent the wheel? Well, check this out. I would look up a variety of paper um, helicopters that have been made to see if I can build and test them all. I have two images here of two paper helicopters that look very, very different than the one that I made. But guess what? They function the same way with the propellers. So that is the improved stage, everyone. So guess what? 
we just finished and completed the entire engineering design process. So congratulations, all right? So we were we built a paper helicopter and we designed and built a device that can stay in the air for a certain amount of time. But we're not done yet. Hold your horses, all right? Because we are now going to partake in a Kahoot game. That's right. So remember to play. If you're using a personal device, you'll need to open up another window, not a tab. So you can see my questions in one window and, uh, and your answer buttons on the other ones, all right? So teachers, I would suggest if you're streaming this probably through your laptop, maybe use a student laptop. Um, if you want to answer for your class, you could even use your phone if you want, all right? Um, so as we are ready to uh, waiting for contestants to join, um, go ahead and log on to kahoot.it, all right? So go ahead and do that for me. And then the pin is going to be 931. 8785. All right. So our moderators are going to put that in the chat and then I'm going to post. I'm going to go on the Kahoot right now. All right. So as I get ready for that, I want to see what kind of names are already popping up. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the Kahoot. All right. Sweet. We got a good amount of students. I know a lot of classes are watching at once. So I would assume that maybe for every one student, we have about 30. All right. So so while we're waiting for our, our students to um, log on, this is really cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check in with Mr. Bruder back at the um, command center. All right. So Mr. Bruder, I wanted to check in to see if we had any other students that have any suggestions of improving our helicopter. Hey, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, they're they're coming in pretty quickly here. I don't know if you hear the dinging sound in the background, but before <laughs> I share those, I was wondering if I could share a few more of the question that you asked earlier on. Yeah, absolutely. But what, what, what kind of aircraft they would fly and where they would go? Yes. Yeah, we had, uh, I really appreciate this one. They'd like to go to England in an airplane to see a soccer game. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. I know uh, the uh, football, as the rest of the world recognize it, had uh, some free agents that were... Um, available this past few weeks so that's really cool kylie shared that would want to go on a fly on an osprey plane on a what kind of plane an osprey oh wow i need to look that up okay kylie maybe you can uh, drop in the chat any links of that because I, I definitely want to look with that up so kylie if you're listening can you show me what kind of plane that is because i am intrigued now see that you have me asking questions again all right that is cool uh, Mrs. Parch's third grade class from Kellogg is going to join you in Hawaii. They want to check out some of the volcanoes. Nice. Shout out to Mrs. Parch and Kellogg. That is cool. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's. Uh, hopefully the volcanoes aren't active though. Okay. I definitely would not want to check those out. Maybe they're dormant. Cool. Uh, be, I, I see our, our Kahoot's still moving, so I'll share a few more. Bianca from War Roar would want to go to Puerto Vallarta on an airplane. Nice. Uh, Very tropical there. Sophia in sixth grade would want to go to Maine for shrimp. Nice. I'll have to get one of those lobster rolls over there, too. Casey from Mrs. Kohler's third grade at Rosebank would want to take a jet to Florida. Okay, definitely. That is cool. Uh, Colin wants to be on an F-22 fighter jet to Texas. Uh, Clara from Parkview wants to fly to the Arctic or Antarctica. Mrs. Blakely's class wants to fly in a G-6. Hey, fly. Okay, I see you all. So yeah, there there's some really really cool ones out there. I I think uh, if someone can build one of these helicopters or planes, we might be able to fly all over the world. There you go. That's that would be remarkable. That would be remarkable. So, wow. I see we have over 500 students, and I'm hoping maybe that's even more than that. This is one of the busiest cahoots I've actually seen within our live events within the last year and a half. So. Thank you, all my students from Chula Vista. Wow. So if you're at school right now, give yourselves a round of applause. Make some noise. And if let the other classes that are not watching know that you're having so much fun doing this. All right. So, yeah. So, while, and, while they're joining, I want to take a, a moment to share the, some improvement ideas. Uh, Emma, yes. Emma shared that she would like to make it more colorful. So the artistic piece, uh, Dylan would want to make it heavier and try it out with more paper clips. Okay. Uh, Brian wants to try adding an, uh, another propeller. Very uh, nice. Esteban shared he really liked how it turned out, but maybe add more blades. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, 
Another student said they want to make it bigger, add more paper clips, maybe three blades instead of two. So it looks like a pretty common one here is adding more blades or wings and trying out more paper clips. Okay. That is, I, I would I would think that would probably be the best way of beginning. And the beauty about the engineering design process is when you make the improvements, all your suggestions, guess what they got they brought to me? They brought a lot more questions now. Like, how would I do that? How would I do that? And now after that, I'm imagining things. So it's really cool to think that it's a design thinking process that allows you to continue to go back. So this is so cool. Wow. Well, I do want to say, because I know we probably want to move on with the Kahoot in a moment, and I know a lot of you are probably anxious and waiting. So just listen very carefully. Um, as we get started in a few moments, the Kahoot pin will always be at the bottom. So if you still want to join, you can. If you accidentally kick, kicked out, because, you know, guess what? Wi-Fi sometimes kicks you out. How many of you all got kicked out of class last year because the Wi-Fi was lagging or whatnot? It happens. But if it does, guess what? The pin will always be there at the bottom and it'll also be in the chat. So you can join at any given point in time. All right, Mr. B, what do you think? Should we uh, give it a few more seconds or should we just uh, get the show on the road? I think we're about ready to get going, although I got another cool answer in from Nancy about Ooh. flying a helicopter over the Grand Canyon. That sounds like a lot of fun. Seriously, flying a helicopter over the Grand Canyon. I wonder how long that that flight would take. If anyone's ever actually ever done it, let us know in the chat, all right? So if you've ever actually had the privilege of being able to do that, um, share with us. That'd be really cool to know. By the way, we, we have some pretty resourceful friends out there. We're already getting some uh, links to Ospreys for you uh, <laughs> to, le to learn a little more after the live event. So I think we're ready Definitely. to get started, and I got some homework for you when you're done. I, I love homework. All right, who loves homework here? Just kidding. Don't answer that. Don't answer that, especially depends on your school. It's like philosophy, which is awesome. All right. That's it's just the way it is. All right. OK, cool. Well. The names are like slowly creeping in and I, I don't say that like with. I think, we're, I, think I think I think we're good to go. Think OK, we'll have that pinned down there for them, too. Cool. All right, everyone, let's get started. All right, engineering helicopters. Are you ready? Three, two, one. All right, here's the quiz. What household item inspired the invention of the propeller on helicopters? Was it red triangle, the air conditioner? Was it blue diamond, the ventilator? Or was it orange circle, the fan? Or was it green square, the frying pan? So what household item inspired the invention of the propeller, the propellers on helicopters? Red triangle, the air conditioner, blue diamond, the ventilator, or orange circle, the fan, or sorry, green square, the frying pan, right? Wow, we have a lot of answers. I'm eager to see too. We got 16 seconds. So those of you that may not know, we are technically on a 10 second delay because that's how live TV does it. So I'm going to wait till the timer goes out and then we'll find out. Oh, let's find out what happened. That is correct. 517 of you answered correctly. It is the fan that inspired the invention of propellers on helicopters. Good job. Whoa, look at that. Wow, it is a head on lead right now with dynamic oryx all right and then silly buffalo is next with i'm not gonna say silly i cannot pronounce it i'm sorry hey you know what i gotta pick up my lexile level don't i all right next all right quiz question number two the invent the innovation station uses this tool that has a motorized propeller connected to it is it red triangle a motor is it blue diamond a spinner is it for all my Friends out there might know what this is. Is it an orange circle floppy disk? If you don't know what that is, ask your parents. Or is it a green square, a servo? Okay, so here at the innovation station, we use this tool that has a motorized propeller connected to it. Is it red triangle, a motor? Is it blue diamond, a spinner? Not the fidget spinners. Is it an orange circle, a floppy disk? Or is it green square, a servo? Which one is this? 
And those of you that are wondering, like, what is a floppy disk? Ask your parents or your grandparents, maybe. It's a really cool uh, little device. And I don't even know where you could find them now. All right. Ooh, you had to be paying attention for this one. Yep. Close. If you uh, answered motor, I'm going to give you credit if you did answer motor. And the reason why is because you probably use the word motorized. And that is really smart. That means you definitely know um, how to <laughs> define your words. All right. Sweet. But the correct answer is servo. All right. Servo. And don't worry if you're in fourth, uh, actually, if you're in fifth or sixth grade, you'll have a chance to actually. Get your hands on one of those this year. All right, let's go ahead and see who took the lead. Uh, Snowy Emu, all right. And then Kind of Gazelle and Social Fox and Royal Tiger with Witty Lemur following. All right, cool. Here is the third question. In Amy's aviation video, what does fuel and air equal? You would have had to pay attention to the video to find out. Is it red triangle energy, blue diamond tension, Orange circle power or green square innervation. It's a big word. And if you don't know what it is, it's okay. In Amy's aviation video, what does fuel and air equal? So when you put fuel and air together, what do you get? Do you get red triangle energy, blue diamond tension, orange circle power or blue, I'm sorry, green square innervation? Which one do you get when you put these two together, all right? It's like uh, Captain Planet always said, with all my powers, with all these powers combined, what do you get? And if you don't know who Captain Planet is, ask your teacher. Wow, 801 answers. And then you're correct, 509 of you got it correct. The answer is energy, which I know a lot of you have. And if you're like, wait, we're supposed to be at recess. Don't worry, you will be released to recess soon after we're done to release that energy, okay? All right, let's see who took the lead. Wow, Snowy Emu and Kind Gazelle are still on top. Congratulations, that is so cool. Hey, Snowy Emu and Kind Gazelle, let me know who you are. Let me know what school you belong to, all right? Question number four, what do we call the people who design, construct, and test aircrafts? Like helicopters. Do we call them the Red Triangles, the Automotive Engineer? Or do we call them blue triangle aerospace engineer? What about orange circle marine engineer? What about green square bicycle engineer? So what do we call the people who design, construct, and test aircrafts like helicopters? Is it red triangle automotive engineer? Blue diamond aerospace engineer? Orange circle marine engineer? Or green square bicycle engineer? What do we call these individuals? Interesting. Hmm. Now, if you're wondering, like, that's a really cool photo. I like it because it's actually in an airport hangar. That's what you call um, the garages of airports or of airplanes. It's a hangar. Isn't that kind of crazy? All right. Let's see. Correct. 627 of you got it correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is aerospace engineer. That is a correct answer. Awesome. All right, last question before we get there. Let's see. Ooh, Snow Emu, you are still there. Kind of Gazelle, you have taken the lead. All right. All right. Last question. What material did the Wright brothers make their propellers out of? Was it red triangle metal, blue diamond wood, orange circle plastic, or green square carbon fiber? What material did the Wright brothers make their propellers out of? Was it red triangle metal, blue diamond wood, orange circle plastic, or green square carbon fiber? All right. You would have to, again, have been paying attention very closely to the video to see what Amy described as one of the first pieces that the Wright brothers had to use, okay? Any woodworkers out there? Anyone has uh, ever built anything? All right, so, waiting on a few more answers. 
And the correct answer is wood. That is right. The Wright brothers use wood to start off. Well, all right, let's see who our winners are. Hey, and if it's you, drop it in the chat. We want to know who you actually are in real life, all right? Because I know these, like, pseudo names are like... All right, so we have Joyful Iguana, Kind Gazelle, and in first place, Snowy Emu. All right, maybe, do you know Limu Emu from Liberty? Not the school, the insurance company. All right, just kidding. All right, so congratulations, Snowy Emu. And we are almost done. But as we get ready to finish, I do have a favor to ask, and that is the following. Before we finish our time together, I would love to see what your helicopters look like. So our moderators are going to place the link in the chat so you can visit and record your video to show us your cool designs. So those of you that were sharing your improvements, hey, make one an improvement and share it with me. I want to see what you all made, okay? So our moderators are going to put that link in the chat. Next, guess what? If you like what we did today and you want to keep learning more, be sure to go to our innovation and instructional YouTube channel. Again, Mrs. Hughes and Mrs. Bias are going to drop that link in the chat. You're going to find many more hands on STEAM at events that our team has done from this school and be this school year and beyond. And guess what? You can build and create anytime you want, and you can even pause us on our video. All right. Last but surely not least, guess what? Our next live event is in two weeks. All right. Mark it on your calendars. Have your teacher write it on the whiteboard right now, Friday, August 27th at 9 a.m. We are going to have none other than the energy queen herself, Mrs. Hughes, from the energy station that is going to show you a really cool project. Well, guess what? It's, it's going to involve energy some way, somehow. The topic's going to show up. All right, everyone. It was great to hang out with you this Friday morning. Have a great weekend. Get some energy out in recess. Um, stay safe out there. And good luck. All right. We'll see you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.